presentation is on the surgical landmarks of the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve, the only motor nerve supply to the cricothyroid muscle. The external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve is vulnerable to injury during neck operations, particularly thyroid and parathyroid surgery. The surgical step that accounts for most of these injuries is while isolating, clamping, and ligating of the superior thyroid vessels. Here, the nerve is quite close and vulnerable for injury. Only 60% of the nerves are more than one centimeter away from the thyroid at this point. The remaining 40% may be included while clamping or uh, ligating the uh, superior thyroid vessels and cause uh, temporary or permanent damage. The reported uh, incidence of surgical damage vary depending on the method of diagnosis of the external branch injury. If only the laryngoscopic features are uh, used, uh, perhaps also with some voice analysis, then the rate may be less than 6%. But if the more accurate laryngeal electromyography was included to confirm the diagnosis, then a much higher rate of injury uh, were reported, up to 58% of the operations. It's also of note that uh, while the rate for the seniors is about 12%, the rate for the trainees, rate of injury for the trainees may be up to 28%. As you can see from this series, the um, rate would vary between very low and low for um, series uh, reporting on uh, damage based the diagnosis on voice changes or uh, laryngoscopy only, but while the EMG was used to confirm the diagnosis, the rate of injury is much higher. As we've just noticed, the rate of injury of the external branch may be common, and in fact, can sometimes be very common. This is principally due to the wide variations in the relation between the external branch and its surgical landmarks, including the superior pole of the thyroid, the superior thyroid vessels, and to the thyropharyngeus muscle. There are several classification systems to help in describing such uh, very wide variations in the relation of the nerve to these landmarks. Basically, there are three surgical strategies to avoid injury of the external branch during thyroid surgery. The number one strategy is active exposure and identification, not only of the external branch, but also its surgical landmarks. The other um, strategies include the use of intraoperative monitoring, particularly during uh, isolation, clamping, and ligation of the superior thyroid vessels where the nerve is most vulnerable. If these two strategies are not used, then the only option left is to stay on the substance of the superior pole of the thyroid while isolating and ligating the superior thyroid vessels, uh, preferably individual ligation of these vessels, the artery and the, and the vein and their branches, rather than uh, mass clamping and ligation of the whole superior thyroid vessel bundle. Identification of the surgical landmarks of the external branch would start from medial and inferior along the course of the nerve upwards and laterally. It starts with the exposure of the cricothyroid uh, space, the revus space or the avascular space, followed by the sternothyroid laryngeal triangle, the Jolz triangle, identification of the superior thyroid pole and the superior thyroid vessels and occasionally if the nerve is not exposed by then the identification of the nerve 
uh, over its course over the inferior constrictor, the thyropharyngeus muscle. Now, occasionally, while doing operations like partial uh, laryngectomies, where preservation of the internal branch is also important, the nerve should be exposed during its course in the neck and sometimes up to its uh, origin from the inferior vagal ganglia. The cricothyroid space of Rivas is an avascular space between the medial end of the superior thyroid pole and the cricothyroid muscle. Uh, to open up this space, the medial end of the superior pole should be uh, retracted laterally and inferiorly, like between the th thumbs of the surgeon here, and the sternothyroid muscle would be retracted laterally and superiorly. And this would expose this avascular plane, and occasionally you would see the external branch running uh, over the cricothyroid muscle. Uh, opening up of this space is important in order to follow up the nerve in the Joule's triangle, the sternothyroid laryngeal triangle. This is where the external branch is commonly identified in the sternothyroid laryngeal triangle, the so-called Joule's triangle. The triangle has three boundaries the sternothyroid muscle, superiorly and laterally, and medially there will be the thyroid, the cricoid, and the cricothyroid muscle, occasionally also a part of the inferior constrictor, the thyropharyngeus, and inferiorly there will be the upper pole of the thyroid gland. By attraction of the upper pole of the thyroid, and retraction of the sternothyroid, uh, the external branch would be identified coursing over the cricothyroid muscle. The external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve in the sternothyroid laryngeal triangle would be seen going from lateral and superior to inferior and medial over the cricothyroid muscle. It's a very thin nerve with a diameter of less than half a millimeter, and it's usually accompanied by branches of the superior thyroid artery. The nerve would branch uh, to supply the two uh, muscle bands of the cricothyroid, the parus recta and the parus oblique, and this division usually occurs distal to the superior thyroid arteries. It occurs while the nerve is on the substance of the cricothyroid muscle. Next landmark is the relationship of the external nerve to the superior pole of the thyroid gland. In normal sized thyroid glands and in cadavers, the nerve comes quite close to the superior pole with slight differences between the right and the left side. The average distance between the nerve and the superior pole is just less than 6 mm on the right side and just more than 6 mm on the left. But perhaps what is more relevant is the range rather than the average. The nerve can be as close as 2 mm to the superior pole of the thyroid or as far as 11 point something from it on the right and just a little bit more on the left. 90% of the nerves would be would lie somewhere between 3 millimeters uh, from the superior pole up to about 9 millimeters from the superior pole. It's important to note that these uh, figures are from uh, studies of including cadavers and normal sized glands and that the nerve would be much closer to the superior pole in the case of enlarged thyroid glands as is the case during most of thyroid operations. The next surgical landmark is the relation between the nerve and the thyroid superior pole vessels. The artery is usually a single vessel 
a single structure until it enters the gland below the upper part of the superior pole, below the top. It usually enters the gland just before that or while entering the gland, the single structure vessel starts to branch. This is not the case with the veins. There may be several superior thyroid veins, two or three, in the superior thyroid vascular uh, bundle, and they start branching before they reach the upper part of the superior thyroid pole. So there will be several small veins and a single artery in this vascular pedicle. The nerve usually lies medial, deeper to the vessels, but occasionally it can be lateral to it and of course more vulnerable and sometimes it passes in between the branches of the vein and the artery and can be hooked by one of these branches to lie a little bit uh, inferior and closer to the superior thyroid pole. The blood supply to the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve comes from tiny branches from the superior thyroid vessels, sometimes from the posterior aspect of the gland in 50% of the cases, and sometimes from the anterior uh, aspect of the gland in just less than 50%, but very rarely from the main trunk vessels. The very small vessels have a diameter uh, very similar to the diameter of the nerve, just more than half a millimeter, and they run parallel to the nerve over the cricothyroid muscle. There are some reports that injury to such blood vessels can cause the nerve uh, dysfunction. The relation between the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve and the superior thyroid vessels is the most important surgical landmark for the nerve identification. It forms the basis for the most acknowledged uh, classification system of the nerve, the Cerny classification proposed in 1992. This is based on the distance between the point of crossing of the nerve and the vessels and the upper pole of the thyroid gland. If the nerve crosses the vessel more than one centimeter away from the upper pole of the thyroid, then this is type one. And if it crosses less than one centimeter from the upper pole, then this is a type 2A. Type 2B is when the nerve does not cross the vessels above the upper pole at all. In fact, it just curves behind the upper pole and then courses its way to the cricothyroid and this is type 2b. This is when the nerve is most vulnerable to injury during uh, ligation of the superior thyroid vessel. This happens in about 14% of the uh, cases of normal thyroid size, but if the thyroid size is uh, increased, the type 2b and type 2a would account for more than half of the cases. Modifications were suggested to refine the Cerny classification, including uh, adding up a certain type, NI, where the nerve is not identified at all. This happens in about 3% of the cases. Despite active looking for the nerve, it would not be identified. Um, the other modification was suggested by Kirner in 1998, who proposed to have a four types rather than three. The type one is just the same like Cerny. This is when the nerve crosses the artery more than one centimeter from the top of the gland, from the top of the superior pole. And type two is when it crosses the artery less than one centimeter from the top of the gland. This is like 2A in the older classification. And the type 2B in the older classification, where the nerve crosses the vessels uh, behind the top of the gland, is now called type 3. Type 4 is added when the nerve avoids crossing the vessels by passing dorsally directly into the 
glycothyroid muscle. Now, type 1 is by far the commonest in normal sized glands in cadavers and normal sized glands where it accounts for about 60% of the cases, 17% for type 2 and 20% for type 3. Um, in uh, cases of enlarged glands, which is the case during surgery, for example, uh, glands, uh, thyroid lobes more than 100 grams in uh, weight. In fact, the nerve would be much closer to the top of the uh, thyroid gland, and it would be either type 2A or 2B in about 92% of the cases. If the thyroid lobe is less than 100 grams in weight, then only 60% of the cases would be either 2A or uh, 2B. Another way of describing the relation between the external branch nerve and the superior thyroid vessel is the one proposed by Lenquist, who proposed to classify this relationship into three types. Type A is the, by far the commonest when the nerve crosses behind the vessels. The nerve would be medial to the vessels. Uh, type B, when the nerve crosses lateral to the vessels, more superficial to the vessels. And type C, when it passes between the vessels branches. These are the bases for the uh, linguist classification A, B and C. Next landmark is the relationship between the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve and the thyropharyngeus muscle, the inferior constrictor muscle. You look for the nerve in this area. If we fail to expose it and identify it with the previous landmarks over the cricothyroid muscle and in relation to the upper pole of the thyroid or in relation to the thyroid vessels. The relationship between the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve and the thyropharyngeus again can be very variable. The nerve can pass all its course superficial to the muscle or deep to the muscle or something in between like it can be superficial in the upper portion and then dips and penetrates the muscle in the lower portion or the other way around it can be deeper to the muscle uh, most of its course and then becomes superficial in the last centimeter or so just behind just before reaching the cricothyroid muscle here if the nerve emerges and becomes superficial in its last bit over the thyropharyngeus it becomes very vulnerable to injury during thyroid dissection and again, because of the wide variation and the relation between the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve and the thyropharyngeus muscle, yet another classification system was proposed by Friedman in 2002, who suggested that when the nerve courses superficial to the muscle all the way to the cricothyroid, then this becomes type 1. When it uh, passes deep to the muscle all the way to the cricothyroid, then it is type 3. Uh, in between, there is type 2 when the nerve is deeper, uh, when the nerve is superficial in its upper part and deeper in its uh, final part, final uh, inferior part of the, uh, its root over the thyropharyngeus. Here, the nerve penetrates the muscle and disappears before reaching the cricothyroid and this is where it is very difficult to find the nerve in relation even if you are actively looking for it in relation to the thyroid pole and finally when there is a need to identify and expose the superior laryngeal nerve itself or its internal branch in addition to the external branch in operations like, for example, partial laryngeal surgery when preservation of the internal branch is required to preserve all the sensory supply to the supraglottic structures, then dissection in the neck to expose the vagal nerve and the inferior uh, vagal ganglia is required. The inferior vagal ganglia gives rise to the superior laryngeal nerve and two centimeters 
from the inferior part of the ganglia, the superior laryngeal nerve would divide into its internal and external branches. The superior laryngeal nerve would first goes behind the common carotid artery and would divide then into the two branches. Occasionally, something like 5% of the cases, the branching would happen at the ganglia level itself. Now, after traveling in the carotid sheath for about two centimeters, they emerge from the carotid sheath about two centimeters uh, proximal to the bifurcation of the common of the carotid artery uh, into the neck. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on the surgical landmarks of the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. Assalamu alaikum.